जे तू ना फड़दा जय गुरुजी गुरुजी का शुक्राना आई एम वेरी हैप्पी इंडिपेंडेंस डे टू ऑल गुरुजीस प्यारी संगत एंड स्पेशली वी एज इंडियंस रियली अप्रिशिएट दिस डे um yes we got independence from the british but we are still slaves to our uh, other negativities so today let's take a, a pledge that we can all release ourselves from all the negative thoughts and just immerse in our guru ji's love in his charan so that we can experience his grace and blessings and also let's take a pledge that we can we are not slaves to the path chor jo bolte hain na spirituality mein granth every granth talks about it our kaam krod lok mo maya this is what really uh, we are slaves to <clears throat> more than you know being free from a country uh, it's every brahman they say is within us so to me freedom is really to uh, go beyond those path chor and to really experience that freedom is where we get our inner happiness our inner bliss um guru ji was a, a very big disciplinarian aur wo unke darbar mein there was cleanliness uh he was in a orderly fashion there was no talking so he was a strict believer of discipline and i was reading um uh, you know in the granth somewhere that discipline is actually the key to one's independence and freedom if we are disciplined in our you know and we are orderly in our day to day lives uh we can achieve bigger things so if you are indisciplined you cannot achieve big things in life you cannot be disciplined in big things and be indisciplined in the minor things in your life even to even when the freedom fight was going on they had a very united front in a very disciplined fashion they moved ahead and they won against the britishers so similarly in our daily lives um for us that discipline is extremely important for example to get financial independence we have to be financially responsible we have to be disciplined financially in how we spend you know what we are earning is not um less than what we are spending similarly in our social environment we have to maintain discipline to have good relationships our behavioral conduct has to be restrained and disciplined where people are concerned only then we can maintain good relationships and finally for our emotional and spiritual independence we need a guru we need to be at our guru's feet um we need to have a spiritual path and be disciplined in our daily nitniyam guru ji bolte the ki sanjha paath karo especially with what is going on right now in covid ki ek jhut baith ke sanjha paath karo to get over um, all of these things that are happening in um, you know around us so to me and to, i'm i know to all guru ji sangat coming here connecting with his lotus feet uh, having a direct connection getting his place a, a grace surrendering at his feet is where our independence comes our spiritual independence our happiness and our freedom really so today rather than having somebody share a satsang i just want to read from the light of divinity it is a a granth that guru ji had put together um with satsangs and other kind of learnings uh, which he compiled during his lifetime but i think it was published after he took maha samadhi so um, there are some passages that are really beautiful and i just thought it's a very appropriate day to read it because to me independence is to find a guru who can lead us and show us what actual independence means for us <clears throat> so this is from light of divinity it's page 5 uh, with footsteps of shraddha The disciple's journey towards the guru is very strange. The disciple is blind, he is ignorant and cannot see the path. He cannot move ahead on his own. It is the guru who leads him on. Thus the guru is not only the goal of the disciple, he is also the guide, the one to whom we are attached with the rope of faith on our mountain climb. Trust thus is the first prerequisite. If you cannot trust the guru, you cannot be led. hence even though the guru is the fountain head of spirituality it has been advocated that the that the would be disciple check out the guru before whole heartedly accepting him the buddha advised as much just as gold is examined through burning cutting and rubbing so you should thoroughly test my teachings and accept them but never out of reverence for me 
Swami Vivekananda had such an attitude at first towards Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. Once the young disciple wanted to test his master's statement that he was unaffected by money. So he put a coin below Ramakrishna's pillow. The Guru could not sleep that night. Vivekananda's test had nearly proven the spiritual armor of his Guru. Rid of doubt, the disciple can then humbly approach the Guru. His relationship with his spiritual guide rests on a firm footing. He can entrust himself to his Guru in life as in death. Only after the strong foundation of trust or shraddhas has been laid is the spiritual superstructure built. Man has to realize anew that he is a spiritual being made in his image. The Guru prods the disciple to realize his divinity. A small story narrates how a cub had been separated from his tribe of lions. He began to live with sheep. In time, his behavior became, became exactly like theirs. He no longer roared, he bleated. A tiger saw him one day and was overcome by surprise. He caught hold of the still young cub and gave him a hard shake. What is the matter with you, the tiger roared? Why do you behave like a sheep? The terrified cub insisted that the tiger was mistaken. He was just a sheep. The tiger took the cub to a lake. The clear water reflected the cub's face. Immediately, he realized his true nature. The Guru's none too easy task is somewhat similar. He demolishes the apparatus on which our mistaken identity rests. We are his children, not creatures of mortal flesh and feverish blood. We are divine personages clothed in hide, not desire-led animals. We are souls encased in bodies, not bodies with souls. Such a turnaround occurs only when the disciple truly touches the Guru's feet, that is, when his ego flakes away from his self. Only then does he receive the spiritual charge that wakes him up. The Guru is a spiritual powerhouse transmitting the current of spirituality into his disciples. At his graceful touch, the disciple awakens. Much preparatory work has to be done. However, we are laden with the psychological ferment and karmic baggage of lifetimes. Equipped with the right attitudes can break our legs even as the journey begins. So the Guru puts us in situations where we learn life lessons. Armed with the acts of right attitude, we hew our path through the many obstacles of life. The Guru's grace is never more evident when life becomes up with a challenge or a test. At such times, to quicken the spiritual evolution of his child, the Guru can take the disciple's karma upon himself, alleviating its misery-causing effects. Sensing that we are about to set our foot on a karmic crevice, he lifts us up and carries us on his own shoulders. What encomiums can be heaped on such a guru? He can only be silently loved, fully followed. Yet there are times when the disciple resents his guru. The guru leaves no psychological stone unturned to perfect his spiritual son. But the disciple's commitment wills as the guru operates on his mental makeup. Howsoever much the disciple may flinch from his guru's ego hurting blows, the guru bent on the disciple's perfection carries his task through. At such weak moments, the disciple can't summon the will required to thwart his habits. But he need only realize that the guru is taking pains on his behalf. The guru's sole interest, unlike the self-interest concealed in every human relationship, is the disciple. His only interest is to take the disciple Godward. Whether he moves mountains of karmas out of the disciple's way to do this, whether he heals him of disease or of mental plagues, that is the Guru's wish. These are only means to the end of leading the disciple to God. The Guru selflessly spends a huge amount of energy and time in fashioning a disciple. The journey up the spiritual mountain is no picnic. Spirituality, as the Sadhguru transmits it, is not a comfort giving philosophy. It is no cosmetic cream that can make our social faces and psychological masks look more beautiful for the moment. It is not a set of rituals and rites that we can fulfill to gratify ourselves or to flatter God. The spiritual terrain is a life consuming affair. It is not a path that one's tread can be walked out of. Once you are with a guru, once you accept his stewardship, 
you must go where he leads you. So, you know, this whole chapter, there's a, a, a lot more there, but I'm going to end it here. So, today is Repub uh, Independence Day. So, in our Guru's Darbar, our independence is to really free ourselves from the negativity and just connect to our Guru's feet. And that's when we will achieve our inner happiness. So, um, to celebrate um, India's freedom, I asked Rashmi Anki to come and just give a tribute and to uh, sing a few songs. So then we can all be in that spirit of freedom. Happy Independence Day to all. I can actually sing in and out, but Guruji ji samne khada hota hai. Which I think nervousness hoti hai. Literally like shivers. Guruji, aap aao aur gaon mere saath.
Thank you.